Hey, this is Digital Bike Computing. Today we're gonna to be talking about interview questions, tips, tricks for somebody that's going in for a desktop support, support analyst, IT analyst. This is in the level two space in the IT stack. Uh, we're gonna be covering some stuff in this video and we'll touch back shortly. So my name is Emilio, I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we're focusing on tips and tricks and help uh, that may help you to land your job as a desktop support analyst, as an IT support analyst. There are various terms that fall under this level two uh, bracket um, and hopefully these things help you to land your next job. So to give you a bit of a summary, generally the IT stack, you've got level one, level two, level three, and then there's different levels outside of that. Level one is your help desk, service desk type of people. Uh, they may not go and do physical, technical support out on the floor. A level two person is now dealing more with going out to the floor, going out and helping users, installing software, troubleshooting hardware issues. They may have an element of doing some basic server administration, configuring things in a server rack, a network cabinet, those sort of things. And then you've got level three, which are people that are more focused on just network, server, system, security, administration, and engineering. So depending on the organization that you're gonna be working, um, could be a small, medium, or large, uh, certain questions may be more directed at certain areas depending on the company, depending on the industry that you're working on, depending, depending on your responsibility. Um, some small organizations may expect you to do a lot more than just a dedicated level two. A larger organization may have you um, specialized in just the level two space. You're not responsible for doing any level one tasks, for example. So it really depends on the organization. So you really want to structure your, your I guess, your ammunition that you're going to be using in the interview, depending on that role. So really try to cater your answers or examples that you have for the position description or the job description for the company that you are going for interviewing in. Something that I always like to look out for is somebody who's excited about technology. Um, I know for me and for a lot of other people in IT, um, we wanna hire somebody who is excited about technology, uh, who's not just coming in, fixing a computer, going home, and then doesn't think about technology. You know, Are you somebody who outside of work is the go-to guy? Your family asks you, can you help me with this? Can you help me with this? Are you building computers? Are you testing new software? Are you going online and figuring out what's going on in IT, you know, what's the latest security issue, what's the latest hardware that's been released by Google, by Apple, you know, what's the latest software, those sort of things. So really somebody that's excited about technology, to me, is something that I find very, very helpful. Um, I want somebody who doesn't know everything, Not you're not gonna know everything in technology, there's so much to learn, but somebody who is excited about it and who I can see is going to be, you know, in five years down the track, because they're excited, they want to learn more, they want to learn more, they're gonna be skilled so much more than they are right now. So questions likely are gonna be catered uh, within a behavioral and a technical space. Um, obviously, you're going for a technical role, so I'm going to be asking, or anybody's gonna be asking you questions from a technical standpoint. They're gonna to want to know whether you are technical enough uh, or have the skills to be able to do your job, rather than just asking you, uh, what is a computer, right? Uh, they may ask you, well, give me an example when you've had an issue with a computer and how did you resolve that problem? We're going to want to understand your train of thinking. Um, how do you resolve problems? What is your troubleshooting? What is your method, your process to be able to identify a problem, resolve the problem, communicate the problem? Uh, how did you fix it? So I really need to understand a bit more than just the answer to that technical question. Uh, what are your top technical skills? I like to generally ask for three. What are your top three technical skills? Um, that could be various, various different sorts of uh, technologies. Um, and what are your top three skills that you're not as good at um, or you haven't worked with but you want to learn more about? How do you keep updated with what's happening in technology? Um, you know, if you're just coming in, doing your job, going home, uh, how do you know when the latest and greatest new whatever is gonna be released or has been released or has been announced? Um, so giving me an understanding of um, how you get updated, where is your news coming from um, is good. Can you tell me a problem when you were thrown into a situation that you did not know how to fix? 
Uh, this is a very, very common problem. It happens to almost everybody that I've ever worked with in IT. Um, you, we don't know everything. Um, and I think staff sometimes are going to assume that you know everything. You are the IT guy, so you can fix everything. That's, that's not the reality, of course. I think we all know that. Um, so you're gonna get thrown into situations where you don't know how to fix the problem. But uh, having a good uh, set of examples that you can share with somebody as to how you resolve those problems without knowing how to uh, is good. Um, you maybe did some research, you maybe asked a colleague, you asked your manager, um, whatever it may be. Uh, at the end of the day, we need to be able to fix the problem for an end user, for a staff member out on the floor, for example. So um, not saying, saying, well, look, I didn't know what to do, so I just left the issue there is not a good answer. Uh, you always wanna be able to give an answer to somebody and fix their problem. However you got there is good. Um, I would always recommend somebody who is, who is tasked to fix something or, or ask something by a staff member, is not to say, well, look, I don't know, and just leaving it at that, that's not very good. Uh, I would prefer to say, look, I don't actually know the answer to that or I don't know how to fix that, but let me find out and get back to you. I think it's a much better response and shows that you are gonna, you know, you're still looking out for them, you still want to help them, but you're gonna go out, do some research, ask some people to come back and then hopefully resolve that problem. Uh, I really wanna understand your troubleshooting um, methodology. How do you troubleshoot an issue? How do you fix an issue? Uh, give me an example when you've had to troubleshoot a problem. So really walking me through your process, how do you troubleshoot an issue? How do you fix an issue? You get a user calling you saying, I can't log into my computer. I can't access the internet. I can't access a shared drive. Uh, talk to me about what you did, how you identified the problem, how you resolved the problem. So sort of walk me through your train of mind and your you know, troubleshooting steps to resolve that problem. Because the, t uh, the desktop technical support analyst person, level two person, uh, is going to be dealing a lot with um, generally non-technical people. They could be in various, various positions. Um, you know, you could be dealing directly with the end users. Um, you could be talking to people in senior management, even in, in IT, perhaps your IT manager, your director, your CTO, whoever it may be, uh, isn't as technical as you are. Uh, maybe they once were, but they're not up to date. So there's always gonna be examples where you have to explain something uh, technical to a non-technical person or somebody who's not as technical as you are. So having examples of when you've had to do that is good. Um, talking to a user about Active Directory and creating an A name record in DNS really has absolutely no sense. The, the, the end user does not uh, compute with these technical terms that you're gonna be talking about. So trying to translate that into a way that they understand it is very helpful. So having some good examples around that is really good. So there's sort of my behavioral technical type of questions. And then I, I generally will ask questions that are more technical focused, you know, more of a, this is the answer sort of questions. What operating systems are you comfortable with? So talk to me about Windows, you know, Windows 7, Windows 10, uh, have you worked with Linux? Have you worked with Mac operating systems? Have you worked with the, you know, the, the, the operating systems on the phones, on Android, iOS, on the iPhone? Explain to me the difference between a desktop or an end user computer and a server. Almost every organization has some sort of a directory service um, built in, um, most common being Active Directory. So what is Active Directory? How's it structured? What is a domain? Um, what is a OU, an organizational unit within Active Directory? Um, how do I bind a computer to Active Directory? I've got a brand new computer that I've just purchased, I've just installed the operating system and I now need to get it talking to the network. I wanna be able to have authentication credentials to be able to log in to that computer. How do I get that talking to the network and to AD? What is a group policy? Why do I need them? I would expect that anybody who's in a level two desktop sort of position to understand how a computer on the network gets its IP. Um, you may not know that straight away, but you're gonna learn that pretty quickly that it's done via DHCP. You've got a static IP that you can put into your computer, but if it's set to dynamic or automatically detect, where's it getting it from? How does it know to get that IP? Um, so understanding DHCP is helpful, at least understanding how it works, the process. What is the blue screen of death? If you're gonna be dealing with email support, um, with Exchange, uh, what is a PST? Uh, a PST file, uh, why would I need to have one? Really somebody who is going to be going for an interview in this role uh, has to have experience with um, at least troubleshooting computer issues, uh, opening up a computer, 
adding more RAM, um, you know, if there's high CPU being encountered on a computer, trying to do some basic troubleshooting on the computer itself from a software perspective, um, really just basic, basic sorts of troubleshooting on the end user computers uh, is something that is paramount. Um, but even if you haven't experienced or haven't had ex experience in that, uh, it's probably good for you to at least get some skills in that. And that's really just a matter of you having your PC at home, opening it up, identifying what the parts are, knowing the basic ports on the back of a computer, HDMI, this is a you know, DVI port, this is a VGA port, this is a comms port, this is a network ethernet port, this is a sound port, whatever it may be. Um, sort of understanding the parts of a computer uh, is, is very, very important. So that is it. That is uh, my video. Uh, there's definitely a lot to cover and hopefully I've given you some help um, to land that uh, next job that you are seeking. Um, I would love it if you commented below, let me know your thoughts. If you did find this helpful, please do let me know. Also, love it if you subscribe, give me a, a thumbs up on this video. Also, click on the little notification there on my video so you can uh, be notified of when I'm releasing new videos. But anyway, that's all for now. Uh, hope you found it helpful and we will see you next time.